Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Tuesday, December 29, 2015, around 7.50 in the evening, dark in Massachusetts. It's now dark out, all the snow is gone and the sleet and the rain, but it iced up quite a bit and be careful on the roads tonight so much black ice and stuff and it's going to be here tomorrow as well but warming temperatures so the snow that fell today probably be all gone by friday and stuff then back to normal temperatures long range forecasters could be very interesting in the middle of january with serious snowstorms that's about it on that some news to report Sad news in the world of Major League Baseball. Former Red Sox third baseman Frank Malzone passed away at the age of 85. He played for the Red Sox in the 50s and 60s, playing in six All-Star games. And also, Joanna Cespedes, of the, who's a free agent, is dwindling down to two teams that are interested in him. They are the Boat Orioles and the Chicago White Sox and also reality television star Rob Kardashian has been diagnosed with diabetes so prayers to him. Di di <coughs> diabetes is a serious condition. And one more thing before my third and final video blog of the night that um, the Philadelphia Eagles have fired head coach Chip Kelly. That's about it on news. My third and final video blog subject of the night is about the former TV kids game show um, Fun House, which lasted in syndication from 1988 through 1990 and was shown on Fox Saturday morning from September 1990 through April of 1991. It was hosted by J.D. Roth and the announcer was John Tiny Hurley for the f seasons in syndication and uh, the announcer for the Fox version of Fun House was Mark Chambers. It had cheerleaders, twin tweet cheerleaders, Jackie and Sam um, Forrester. They were tw twin cheerleaders and it was produced by Stone Stanley Productions in association with Lorimar Tower Pictures which is now Warner Brothers Domestic Distribution Television. And Fun House had two teams, a red team and a gold team, and both team members, they had a boy and a girl. And they had stunts on this game show and stuff like that. First three rounds were the stunt rounds. The first round, it was usually the boys facing off against each other. And then the second round was the girls facing off against each other. And the third round of the stunts were like all four members of the team were p participating in stunts and stuff. All of these stunts were like, you know, crazy stunts and stuff that sometimes involve slime and gook and other stuff and whichever team won the stunt would get 25 points and then they would go back and the host J.D. Roth would answer would have a question about that particular stunt and if they got it right they would get 25 more points and then they had the fourth and final round before the fun house which was the grand prix round which was a two two lap race around a track and stuff. Sometimes they would use carts and stuff, but other times they would use other stuff, including like um, wrap around um, tires and hula hoops and other stuff like that. And, if, and they usually have the, the boys running around first and then the girls or vice versa. And then they had uh, them to collect tokens and these tokens were like well inside a lot of stuff and they were 10 point tokens and 25 point tokens and they had up to 300 tokens in play during the, the grand prix round 
but if a token fell on the ground and stuff, it was worthless, out of play and stuff like that. And then when the race was over, which team won, would get the checkered flag and 25 points, and then they would ha add up the po um, tokens, like 10 points and 25 points, whichever team won with the most tokens would go on to the bonus round and stuff like that. Usually, they would always have the, the about 80 to 90 percent of the show with Funhouse. They would always have the red team win and stuff. Some people, when I'm always when I watched it back in the day, they, this game could have been fixed and stuff like that for the red team to win 85 to 90 percent of the time. But you can't fix game shows and stuff because that's a felony and that stuff. But I thought. They could work their way around it and stuff like that. Or somebody said they could have used some PEDs and stuff because they all, everybody, it seemed always the red team would always win and stuff like that. Then they would go on to the bonus round, the fun house, where they had two minutes to um, go through so many rooms and stuff like that to collect prizes and money. They had prizes like CD players or toys or trips and lots of money cash if they went to a specific room that had the bonus prize then they would get the bonus prize which could be a trip around the world or Bahamas or whatever and it was a very fun fun game and stuff and they did not have any returning champions on fun house and stuff like that and once in a while they would have like celebrity guests there play for each um, member of the team and stuff, or they had theme weeks with stunts, with states and, uh, and other cool stuff. It was a very, very fun game show and stuff like that. It was like, it was like a copy in the success of Double Dare, which was on like Nickelodeon at that time and stuff like that. And Fun House is like a children's variation of the classic Goodman Good Todman game show beat the clock and stuff, and it had a successful th three year run on, on like television and stuff. But we ones have never been seen anywhere, not on the game show network, certainly not Buzzer and stuff. But you could catch episodes on YouTube and stuff like that. It was a fun game show, but it was the only thing I really didn't like with the red team always winning. And that's about it on that. I will be back tomorrow, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter for. Three more video blogs. First video blog will be about the top 10 sports stars to wear the number 58. The second video blog will be about the, the week 17 NFL predictions, the final week of the regular season, plus the semifinals of the college football playoff. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about the history of the Intercontinental Championship from 1979 through 2002. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Bunny guy, Molly Rosenblatt of WCCO in Minneapolis, St. Paul Rocks, and has nice legs. Elizabeth Hart is so, so stunning. She's got nice legs as well. And Amy Swansea's the best. Elizabeth, I mean, um, Barbara Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet sudden accident. She has nice legs as well. And in the words of Sean Lynch, get out! See you later, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Bye now. See you later.